Thank you for the opportunity to make this submission to the Australian Tribunal into the Human Rights Impacts of Unconventional Gas. My name is Gerlin McCarran. I'm a general practitioner living and working in Brisbane. In my opinion, the Queensland Government and the gas industry in Queensland have actively, knowingly and persistently violated the right to an environment that is consistent with the well-being of its citizens. And in doing so, I believe they have failed in their duty of care. I have recently had a peer-reviewed paper published in the International Journal of Environmental Studies. In it, I draw attention to the remarkable increase in hospitalisation of Darling Downs residents between the years of 2007 and 2014. And this hospitalisation data was supplied by the Darling Downs Hospital and Health Services. Hospitalisation for acute respiratory conditions more than doubled from 1,257 to over 3,000. Acute hospital admissions for circulatory conditions also more than doubled, from 2,198 to over 5,000 cases. These increases were not explained by the modest rise in population of 9.46%. These were the years when the coal seam gas industry were ramping up their activities in the Darling Downs. The gas industry's own data reported by them to the National Pollutant Inventory, demonstrates escalating emissions of air toxins which are well known to cause harm to human health. Particulate matter, which is a well-known cause of cardiovascular illness and death, as well as childhood respiratory diseases, was up 6,000% to 1,926 tonnes. Oxides of nitrogen emissions, which can irritate eyes, throat and lungs and increase the risk of hospitalisation for people with asthma soared nearly 500% to over 10,000 tonnes. Emissions of formaldehyde, a sensory irritant causing burning sensation in eyes, nose, throat, coughing, wheezing, as well as being a known cause of cancer, was up from 12 kilograms to over 160 tonnes. There were comparable spikes in emissions of carbon monoxide, volatile organic compounds and sulphur dioxide, all of which have the ability to harm human health should exposure occur. Importantly, this was the gas industry's own data which they acknowledged they were emitting into the air breathed by Darling Downs residents. Control for population, acute circulatory and respiratory hospitalisation rates rose coincident with the rise in pollutants from the coal seam gas industry known to cause circulatory and respiratory symptoms. These results demonstrate that the burden of air pollution from the gas industry on the well-being of the Darling Downs population is a significant public health concern. While I do not suggest that the figures directly prove that the coal seam gas activities are causing this increase, my findings are in line with the scientific research on the known health impacts of many air pollutants emitted by the industry, as well as with those of many studies from the United States. Until there is a sufficiently large and well-resourced study completed to support or refute the proposed link, the link remains. There are many unknowns in Queensland. The data collection and research into the human health impacts of unconventional gas mining in the Darling Downs, which should have been done, has simply not been done. In 2013, the Australian Medical Association warned that the health impacts of coal seam gas had not been adequately researched and effective regulations were not in place to protect public health. Their warning was ignored. In 2013, I called for comprehensive human health studies after documenting the health of 113 people from 38 households in Queensland's gas fields. 58% of the people I surveyed reported adverse health impacts which they attributed to the industry. And these included nosebleeds, eye irritation, skin irritation, headaches, metallic taste, nausea, anorexia, chest tightness, cough, muscle pains and spasms. People couldn't sleep because of the noise and the vibration from coal seam gas activities and because of the constant stress of living with and dealing with the gas industry. A real concern to me was the high percentage of symptomatic children. In 2013, the government did respond to ongoing health complaints by releasing a very limited report which came to no conclusion. The government report relied mainly on inadequate industry commissioned environmental data. Only 15 people had been seen by the designated government specialist who was an occupational health doctor retained by two coal mines. There was no involvement of paediatricians, respiratory physicians, neurologists, dermatologists, ear, nose and throat specialists. 
However, the vital outcome from that otherwise minimal report was the future work recommended by Queensland Health. Queensland Health specifically required documentation of total gas field emissions and the exposure of the community to those emissions. Five years later, that data is still not available. A personal communication with Darling Downs Health and Hospital Services indicates that critical health-based recommendation was blocked by the regulator, that is, the Department of the Environment and Heritage Protection. Freedom of Information Documents confirms this. DHP acknowledged that they did not have access to data to allow for the comparisons to the air quality objectives set out in the Environmental Protection Policy, that is EPP Air, which purpose is to protect environmental values, including health and well-being. And despite this, DHP determined that they found no cause to expand monitoring. The rejection by the regulator of Queensland Health's recommendation is of serious concern. The government, instead of acknowledging the limitations of their 2013 investigation and following up on the health recommendations, chose a path of actively promoting the myth that Queensland Health had conducted a comprehensive study. The government permitted activities that are patently hazardous. They permitted, for example, a quarry for silica, which causes lung cancer in the middle of a rural residential estate with no requirement for air monitoring. They permitted disposal of untreated coal seam gas flowback on rural roads. They permitted disposal of contaminated coal seam gas drilling fluids, drilling muds and human waste onto agricultural land. And within 50 metres of a creek of the Murray-Darling River system, they have permitted a toxic waste landfill to bury millions of tonnes of contaminated salt and unidentified sludge from coal seam gas operations. The Queensland Government has an ambient air monitoring network, but before February 2015, the network did not include a single air monitoring station sited in the Queensland gas fields. Coincident with their investigation into the massive contamination of agricultural land by underground coal gasification company Link Energy at Hopeland, an air monitor was sited there. And since last year, there were meant to be four other real-time monitors at Tara, Miles Airport, Burncluth and the Condamine. But in practice, they have been offline and all available for weeks at a time. Over several years, the experience reported to me by people who live in the gas fields is that when they have raised issues with government departments, they've been ignored and treated with contempt. One example, a full 16 months after a resident reported that a regulated waste pond was overflowing, officials finally inspected the site, 16 months later. When infrequent ad hoc testing for noise or emissions have been scheduled, Residents have noted that most of the gas infrastructure has been turned off. In fact, for the residents, the silver lining of a visit from a politician or any proposed testing is that there won't be flaring or noise for a few days. No matter what harm the community documented, no matter what evidence they presented to the relevant government departments, nothing has changed. Locals invested in gas monitors and have recorded VOCs at 5% by volume on their verandas. Locals invested in Geiger counters and documented raised readings of radioactivity in areas where produce water had been dumped. Locals photographed and recorded the visible toxic fumes from the nighttime flares and the invisible emissions made apparent with flare cameras. Locals had urine tests which were funded by the Nitty Nanas. 13 people had mixtures of two or more very concerning chemicals in their urine. This included methyl ethyl ketone, acetone, phenol, cresol, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and the metabolites of toluene and xylene. They reported their results. Nothing was done. People living in the gas fields reported debris which fall out of the sky onto themselves and their property. This debris which takes the paint off their cars was falling onto the roofs which are the collecting system for their drinking water. Some rainwater tanks were tested. The finding was acid rain which is an indicator of serious air pollution. The pH was as low as 4.36, which is 10 times more acidic than unpolluted rain. A range of heavy metals were detected, including arsenic, chromium, nickel and lead, as well as hydrocarbons. All exceeded the Australian drinking water standards and lead was 10 times above safe levels.
nothing was done. An independent scientist tested residents' rainwater tanks for radioactivity. He found that the radioactive daughters of radon, that is lead-210 and polonium-210, were orders of magnitude higher than one would have expected to find in an undisturbed environment. Cesium-137, which is not naturally occurring, was also detected in two tanks, and these tanks had been in place for less than six years. The residents reported these findings. Nothing was done. DHP finally analysed some of the deposits on glass windows. They identified steel particles corroded by sulphur and chlorine. Nothing was done. The gas industry claimed it was lurks, amazingly sugar deposits left by insects. Local people reported their concerns about cancer, multiple cases within families and small communities, cancer in children and young people, concerns about leukaemias, lymphomas, sarcomas, pancreatic cancer. Despite the fact that a research paper has been published by Dr Angela Werner showing that certain hospitalisation rates for neoplasms, that is cancers, and blood immune diseases increased more quickly in the coal seam gas area than in the other study areas, nothing has been done. Despite the fact that a survey by Australian Commonwealth Scientific and Research Organisation of 390 residents found that 48.5% felt that their community was only just coping, not coping, or resisting the industry, nothing has been done. Despite the fact that a research project by Dr Merton Morgan published in 2016 identified that farmers in the coal seam gas stressed and globally stressed profiles exhibited clinically significant levels of psychological morbidity, nothing has been done. Despite the fact that there's been an extensive body of primary research internationally into the environmental and health harms associated with unconventional gas industry, there appears to remain a culture of denial amongst the responsible politicians and bureaucrats in Queensland. In their rush for perceived monetary gain, the Queensland government actively promoted hazardous industrial processes literally in families' backyards. They did this without baseline assessments, without any health assessment, without understanding the impacts on groundwater or air quality, with no plans of how to get rid of the waste and without even maps of where the critical infrastructure would be sited. In fact, the Queensland Government issued the CSG LNG licences contrary to the requirements of the Environmental Protection Act 1994, the law at the time. Governments have a duty of care to their citizens. Australia is a signatory to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Australia is a signatory to the Convention on the Rights of the Child, which places an onus on all parties to ensure the healthy development of the child. But the evidence points to the unfortunate conclusion that the Queensland Government has failed in its duty of care to the residents of Queensland gas fields. Thank you.